here with what's working now on today's episode where we're going to talk about opportunity. It's absolutely amazing. The opportunities that are out there, I got four things to share with you. Stay tuned as we go over all of that right now. I'm Trey Llewellyn, and over the last six months, I've hacked over 40 top performing funnels by some of the most elite online companies in the world. And the best part, I recorded everything. Join me as I uncover the deepest secrets in the online world and reveal how to cash in using their techniques. Discover it all by visiting MrOnIt.com forward slash masterclass today. All right, welcome back. So here's the deal is I'm really excited to actually talk to you guys about this because this is of a recent thing that I witnessed and I'm always looking for this. I'm always training my brain how to look for opportunities. Like how, how do you do that, right? Like how do you always make sure that everything's kind of going down? So we had a, uh, we had a really cool guest on Commerce Kings uh, episode, commercekings.com, make sure you check that out. That's gonna be going, that has gone live actually, it's done now. Uh, with Carl White, and he talked about uh, not only about getting in front of parades, but seeing opportunities and taking advantage of those, and also a little notebook that he keeps in his pocket. So I thought that was really cool. I thought that really, you know, jives with what we're talking about uh, here right now. So what's up, Rocky? Good to see you, man. Uh, so here's the cool thing is is I'm going to talk about a ton of opportunities today that are just kind of out there, worlds and spheres that you don't probably know about or think about very often, but they do exist, and it's always cool to hear about those, and then just kind of think, like, how can I apply this uh, to my business? How can I look at my business in a different way, or just always know that these are out there? So I uh, appreciate you guys commenting on here. appreciate you guys being on here and, uh, and taking your time. We do these, uh, you know, throughout the week at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, so today is what's working now, so, which is opportunity. So the first thing is, is maybe you guys were uh, a witness to the recent eclipse. I thought that was really cool. I actually almost did not participate. Uh, we were, we didn't even buy glasses. Uh, I know Papa John's, I think, was giving out glasses, uh, which is kind of cool. But we didn't even have glasses. So Jennifer and I are sitting at the house because we, everybody, everybody in St. Louis took the day off. Like our whole staff was off to go watch the eclipse. Even my brother just went to go to like this event. And so we're sitting at the house. And uh, we know that totality is supposed to hit like 117 or like 116 or something. And uh, it's like 12 o'clock. And you just kind of start to feel like this different uh, shade is outside, you know, like kind of a cloud cover almost. And I was like, oh, yeah, the eclipse is happening today, obviously. But, you know, I wonder if we're even in, like if we, if we can even see it because these guys travel like 20 more miles in St. Louis to go see witness to, uh, 100% totality. So I looked it up on the website and sure enough, like, we're, we're, my house was going to be inside that, whatever that, that stream is, that totality, where we'd have to be able to witness it, where you could actually don't even need classes for like 50 seconds. And so, um, so anyways, I, I was like screaming at Jennifer. I was like, Jennifer, like we can do it. Like we're going to be able to look at it and for like 50 seconds, hopefully we don't burn our retinas and check it out. So it'd be kind of cool. So the time ticked down and, uh, and we got to witness probably one of the coolest events uh, right there without glasses. So I thought that was pretty cool, up to the minute, right? Where basically, you know, the crickets were chirping, and uh, it turned totally, and basically, uh, my partner, Tony Tiefenbach, said it just right. Like, it's kind of like if you went outside and put sunglasses on, it kind of felt like that, but you didn't have sunglasses on. So it was a kind of a weird, eerie feeling. But here's the thing, is that eclipse, there was so much opportunity happening around St. Louis and Tennessee and Canada for where that moon uh, was gonna go in front of the sun. And I thought that was a really cool thing to witness, which was people were uh, renting out their second bedrooms, right? Their guest bedrooms for, I think someone listed for like three grand a day because we had supposedly three million people come into St. Louis. So if you take, if you take the city of St. Louis and you take all the suburbs like Chesterfield, St. Charles, O'Fallon, uh, Winsfield, all that stuff, that equals about three million people in population. St. Louis is like, I think under a million, but with all the rest, it's, it adds up to three million. So realistically, realistically what they were saying was St. Louis and its suburbs are going to double in size because of this eclipse. So people saw opportunity in that. They went out to Airbnb.com. They started listing their room uh, for rent at $1,000 a night, at $2,000, because all the hotels, all the campgrounds, all of everything was just booked. Like, you couldn't get a campsite, you couldn't get an RV site, you couldn't get uh, hotel rooms. St. Louis was fully booked. And that's where all these homes started popping up and saying, hey, you know what, if you got for the right amount of money, we'll house you. 
well, how have you, you know, have you come in and, and all these people go out? So that was a huge opportunity. So that would pay probably a couple months rent for a couple people. But it's all about like seeing opportunity in, in holding that, right? So I, I appreciate you guys commenting on here. I appreciate you, you know, comment because I get to talk to you as well since we are live here, which is really fun. Uh, but the other cool thing was not only are people like using Airbnb that week, there was other things that were, that were happening. People were selling glasses. People were selling uh, kits, which I thought was cool. They were selling like glasses, a book bag, and maybe like some sort of almanac or something like that. Uh, sales increased, obviously, for camera lenses and cameras and photos and cereal boxes uh, to build out the tin foils. And then, of course, the events, right? People were, were having like the, I don't even know who put on the one. I think it was like maybe the Chamber of Commerce put one on in, in Chesterfield where you paid, I thought this was so funny, is you paid them $20 to go to this, you know, whatever, this event, this gathering, and watch the eclipse. In my mind, I'm thinking, why would you pay $20? Like, you can go outside your house, look up, and there's the eclipse, versus, like, you, you're going to the set place at a set time and paying $20 to win. It just totally didn't make sense to me. So, uh, so anyways, a couple of people that I do know did it, and... I called them like three hours before the eclipse. I was like, how's it going? And they're like, uh, it's just kind of hot and, you know, really hot waiting for the eclipse. So it's like this huge, you know, wait time where I was lucky enough to be able to step outside my door, check out the eclipse. That's pretty cool. Go back inside and, and, uh, and keep working. So here's the thing is we're always looking for opportunity. We're always looking for new ways to make revenue, new ways to make money. I want to share with you a couple things that I've stumbled upon uh, through my lifetime so far. Uh, that I thought was just like outstanding, like just remarkable of, wow, that didn't even, I didn't even know that that even existed. Because at the end of the day, we're taught in school to do a couple things, right? Go get educated, go become a lawyer, go become an attorney, go become a doctor, go become, you know, someone who takes an education engineer from my, from my uh, perspective. But there's, there's, there's things out there past like real estate insurance, you know, um, home warranty guys, that kind of thing. Like there's those levels but then there's like this world out there that not many people know that exist. And I want to share with you a couple of the ones that I found that I think is just so cool. So the first one is, is um, one, one, a, guy, a guy that I know, he, what he does is, is really cool. And what that is, is he goes to places like Goodwill. So we have a Goodwill headquarters here in St. Louis. And all the like Goodwills out there, outside of the ring, uh, go and put all the stuff that's not going to sell in their stores. They, they push it to those headquarters, which is downtown St. Louis. And so what he's done is he goes out and he goes to these Goodwill headquarters and he buys shoes. So he buys shoes from Goodwill. Shoes that might have a hole in them, shoes that might be a little too worn, maybe the shoelace is broken, things like that. And what's even better is he buys a pair for a quarter. So Goodwill says, you know what, we don't want these. We got them for free by means, but, but we're going to sell them to you for a quarter. And how many do you want? So what he does is he buys a container full, which I believe fits around 40,000 shoes is what I think it does. Yeah, 40,000 shoes. And so he fills up a container full, like a 40-foot container, 40,000 shoes, and ships them to Africa. So he buys the shoes for 25 cents, and then he ships it over to Africa, which the container is going to cost you about nine grand to ship, lands in Africa, and then he sells them to basically like these managers who buy the shoes for 75 cents. And then they have what are called, I think, peddlers that have their little tables, they have their little uh, you know, shoes on a thing, and, and they sell them for a buck. So somebody in Africa is buying these shoes for a dollar, so they made 25 cents. He made 50 cents on the transfer. So yeah, that's right. So that's $20,000 he's bringing in for every container minus the you know, five to $9,000 to ship it. Plus, what's even crazier is he does, he's doing two containers a month. Two containers a month of just all these shoes that no one's gonna buy, that he sees this, this idea, this opportunity where, wow, I can sell shoes to a different country that, that do want them, right? A tre like it kind of goes back to the whole point where you know someone's, um, someone's junk is someone's treasure. So I thought that was really cool. So I was, I was asking him like, well, what, what, other, what other people are doing this? And he goes, oh, there's a lady down the street who does the same thing with teddy bears. So she goes to you know, places like Goodwill and grabs all the teddy bears that might miss, be missing an eye or you know, whatever and 
She gets them, who knows how much she pays, and ships those to Africa. Another guy does it with belts. So he's selling belts to other countries like Russia or people that you know might be a third world country. What a cool opportunity, right? So how interesting is that to where Goodwill, I love the Goodwill business, by the way, because you know, they, 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 they're, they're building some really nice buildings. And they have, they have inventory that they don't pay for, that they sell for crazy amounts of profit because, again, they didn't pay for it. And all they really they have to work on is their overhead and their employees, which, by the way, they get tax deductions because they're a non-for-profit organization. Like, business plan, amazing. And then they sell all this other stuff to, uh, you know, to people like that who go out and sell it to Africa and, and other places. And it's amazing. So, cool opportunity, right? So, what about some hearts if you guys think that is a, that's a pretty cool opportunity that, that, that exists out there? So, the other one is, or another one that I know of, is the, the 4th of July. So, this is one that we try to do every year. It's so fun to go out and, and really just educate our kids on how to make money and how to, like, that transaction works and how the sale works and, like, how the hustle works because there's nothing, there's nothing more entertaining than that. So what we do is, or what I like to do, is I like to go to uh, the dollar store, and I like to go and grab uh, uh, glow sticks. So you can get, I think you can get like, I think it comes with four, right? Is it coming with four? Yeah, four for a dollar. You get four of those long necklaces, right? Like those long necklace glow sticks for four for a dollar. So you're paying 25 cents each. And so what you can do, and I do the necklaces because the bracelets don't sell us hot, but the necklaces usually do. And what I'll do is I will go down to the parade or I'll go down to the firework, you know, exhibit or whatever where they blow up, blowing stuff up. And I will do the glow stick thing, which is teaching the kids how to sell. And it's a great charity thing. Like you can donate the cash to charity to the church or keep it, whatever you want to do. But it's a really cool, entertaining idea. So what I like to do is I will sell one glow stick for $3 or I'll sell two for $5. Well, the thing is, is everybody always buys two, right? Because they always got $5 cash, they got 10 bucks, and usually the kid wants one or two of them. So the money there is absolutely amazing. So basically, if I sell four at 10 bucks, I paid a dollar for it, I made $9 profit right there, boom. That's amazing, right? And so I'll usually buy like a 25 packs that'll give me 100 glow sticks. So what is that? How much is that even? So basically, oh, is that 25 bucks or so? Yeah. Yeah, 25 bucks with tax. Woo. And so, so then you go out and sell that for cash, which is really cool. So you might make, I don't know, what is that, 100 sticks times uh, five, or no, three. So basically, what is that, 50 times five? So $250? Yeah. So $250 after spending, what, 25 bucks or so? Imagine you had two people doing that. Yeah, two people hustling, right? And that's the cool thing. And so how I learned about that opportunity actually was uh, when I lived back in my hometown, and I was helping the church. I think they had like a concession, a concession stand or something. And uh, a good friend, Mark, was like, oh, by the way, here's like, and he just hands me like this big old thing of glow sticks. He's like, go sell these to everybody. I was like, okay, well, how much do I sell them for? And so I went out and I literally like dumped all these glow sticks out. And I came back with this wad of cash. And I was like crying. I was like, here you go. Like, there, you know, this is, this is amazing. Like, I just, wow, that was awesome. Like, that was so much money. And so I learned from that opportunity. And ever since, every time 4th of July comes, I go, we got to do glow sticks because it's, it's such a cool opportunity. So make sure you go out and do that. That's, that's a lot of fun. Another one was uh, an opportunity that exists out there. How many times have you guys been to, like, El Magues? Do you guys have El Magues? Anybody, uh, anybody got El Magues in their thing? The uh, Mexican food? So when you go into El Magues or, like, any other place, you'll notice that there's always those, like, cool candy machines. And, uh, and you never really think much about it. Like, the kids will be like, oh, I want a piece of candy. Or, you know, you put a quarter in there or whatever. But that's about it. Like, you never really, like, think that hard on the candy machine. I mean, I never have. I'm just kind of sitting there. It's like, you know, like, ugh, who knows? And, but anyways, this guy was in our mastermind. And we're sitting at the lunch table. And he was looking to get online. And so we're sitting down talking about that. And I go, well, what are you doing right now? Like, what do you make, you know, like, what kind of money are you bringing in? He goes, ah, oh, well, I, you know, I bring in about $100,000 a year. I go, okay, but doing what? He goes, oh, I just sell, I sell bubble gum. I go, you make 100 grand just selling bubble gum? He's like, uh-huh. I was like, dude, you might want to just stick with that. <laughs> like, that's absolutely amazing. Like, that's really cool. And so I, I go, I, go I, I got three questions for you. And he's like, all right. I go, how much are the bubble gums? Like, how much is a ball of gum? He goes, oh, it's usually about two cents. 
I go, right, so, so you're basically selling a bubble gum for 25 cents. You're, you're paying two cents for it, so your margins are like 23 cents per bubble gum, right? He's like, huh? I go, okay. So to really make this work, I go, how much, um, like where, where do you get the bubble gums from? Are you, are you shipping them in like from pallets from China? Or like are they, are they coming from like a different factory? Or like what's, what's the deal with that? Like where is the bubble gums coming from? And he takes them in and he's like, well, I just, um, I just go to Sam's Club. I go, what do you mean you just go to Sam's Club? He goes, well, when we run out, I just go down to Sam's Club. I buy a container of bubble gum and uh, just kind of put it in the machine. That's it? Yeah, that's it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I go, okay, last question, because I know there has to be more overhead than this. How much can, on consignment are you, are you paying the restaurants to put the, the bubble gum machine in the store? He goes, ah, that's, that's a beautiful thing. He goes, um, it's free. I go, what? He goes, yeah, all I do is I go down to uh, the local hospital and uh, whatever in that town, and I say, hey, I'm going to go put these bubble gum machines uh, throughout the restaurants in your town, and I would like to donate a percentage of the proceeds to your foundation, whether that be can Cancer Foundation or whatever uh, foundation. And so they write him a really nice letter from the hospital saying that, you know, we, we endorse this. Like, we stand behind this. Here you go. So what he does is he goes and takes the bubblegum machine into the store and says, Hi, I'm, you know, such and such with such and such bubblegum machines. We're doing this for the local hospital. Would you mind putting the gum machine in your front door? Yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> That's it. I was like, what? Like, so hold up. So you get the bubble gums for two cents. Yes. You get the bubble gums from Sam's Club. Yes. And you get to put the bubble gum machine in the store for free. Uh-huh. Dude, you might want to stick with bubble gums because that is an amazing thing. He goes, but it gets better. I was like, it gets better? What are you talking about? Like, that is amazing. How does it even get better? He goes, well, my success rate on putting the bubble gum machines in the stores was about like 50%. So if every, you know, one, one out of two people, I, they'd say yes. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. He goes, well... Then I got really smart. I was like, dude, how do, you get, how do you get smarter? Like, that's pretty smart of what you've done so far. He goes, well, what I started doing was I started hiring off-duty police officers. I was like, no, you didn't. He goes, yeah, I started doing these, these off-duty police officers, and I would have them take the foundation letter with the bubblegum machine and go into the store and ask if they'd put the, the, the bubblegum machine in their store. He goes, I went from 50% to 90%. 50% to 90%. Guys, that is like crazy optimization on your funnels, right? On your Like think about your conversion goes from 50% on your upsell to a 90%. Like you would be like praising the Lord, jumping up and down and going crazy because that's super exciting. Like the amazing, so he had, he had 600, 600 uh, craziness, right? 600 machines, 600 bubblegum machines throughout, I think, four states, three or four states that he was doing this. He had a guy that would go collect the quarters. And I was, I, you know, I asked him, like, well, how do you make sure the dude doesn't steal quarters? He goes, you know, you, he might be. But the thing is, is you would, you would pretty much know, like, how many bubble gums you're buying. And you'd have that pretty much down to a science to where he knew basically what it should be bringing in. I was like, man, that is, that is an absolute astounding business. So that, that's, that's crazy, right? Which is, which is amazing. So, uh, Jodine's, Jodine must be uh, in the gum machine because she's saying if you charge over 25 cents, you got to pay tax on it. So, well, seems like we'll be at the 25 cent mark, won't we? Which it seems we're, we'll keep we'll keep those machines there. So, hey guys, think about those. You know, I gave you four opportunities today. How can you look at those opportunities and use those in your business and in what you, in what you're doing and, and how you're doing it? Because it's absolutely amazing just to see like not only of the traditional jobs that are out there in these spheres that kind of exist, but those things that exist outside of that and, and just the things that are happening. So just kind of be aware, always be looking at what's going on and, uh, and check back. We got something really special for you next week on Monday of what's working now at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. But my name is Trey Llewellyn. I, I, I was glad you guys got to be here today. I enjoyed talking with you and showing, sharing you with these opportunities that I have. Um, I will see you next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye. I'm Trey Llewellyn, and over the last six months, I've hacked over 40 top-performing funnels by some of the most elite online companies in the world. And the best part? I recorded everything. Join me as I uncover the deepest secrets in the online world 
and reveal how to cash in using their techniques. Discover it all by visiting mrawnit.com forward slash masterclass today.